Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we've just talked a lot about the Tua Tagovailoa uh, signing a massive contract with the Dolphins for years, $212.4 million, making him the third highest paid quarterback in the league, $0.1 million over Jared Goff, who signed a contract earlier this season. We also talked about the MLB trade deadline continuing to heat up as a bunch of trades has been have been made with the Orioles, with the Rays, with the Phillies. Uh, there's they've been just about everywhere. We're gonna take a quick stop away from baseball, go back into the world of the NFL as we continue our series, breaking down the off season and giving a record prediction for every single NFL team. As today, our pit stop is the Arizona Cardinals. But before we get into that, remember if you to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should be, uh, that should message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw it in the comments. Throw it in the, in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate every single one of you for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. But like I was saying, we're going to get into the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Arizona Cardinals offseason, that's where we're going to start. And as has been a theme with a lot of the uh, NFC West, it's been a relatively quiet offseason, right? That's not to say that they didn't get a lot, and specifically in their draft class, which we'll get to in a second, uh, the Arizona Cardinals, I think, absolutely knocked it out of the park, getting excuse me, three or four potential starters, really improving the team uh, from a lot of positions of weakness. Uh, but as far as free agency goes, this is where we're going to start off our show today, or at least our segment today, excuse me. Uh, they're too big free agent pickups, Jonah Williams added to the offensive line, and Sean Murphy Bunting added to the cornerback position. Now, we'll talk about the defense and the corners in a little bit because I we're going to talk about their draft, uh, but you know, we talk about an offensive line, and kind of an underrated one is the Cardinals. That's not to say that the Cardinals have this incredible a uh, generational great offensive line, but for a team that has as many holes as it does, filling up your offensive line with a bunch of, you know, really high-end guys, Jonah Williams, Paris Johnson, who was drafted last season, Isaiah Adams, who they drafted this year, uh, you know, Will Hernandez was drafted a little while ago, high pick as well. You know, it's not like the sexiest offensive line not that there are many super sexy offensive lines out there but you know this is just a solid unit it's not going to be one of the worst in footballs which is really important for a team that with Kyler Murray that you know if they can provide a little bit of time for him he can really be great uh and speaking of you know being great it's hard to do that without weapons and they were kind of running low on weapons all of last season, and they did a great job fixing that. Obviously, it's really, really easy to go and say they fixed their weapon problem because they went and got Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr., generate, uh, seem, uh, from all reports, a generational talent at wide receiver. They get him with the fourth overall pick in the draft. A great get for the Cardinals. Absolutely it's a perfect need. It fits everything they need. He has the potential to be the next great receiver coming out of college, as we've seen a a, a large wave of them coming recently with uh with how many huge uh with how many huge jumps into the league these wide receivers have had recently. Outside of Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, I really did like their draft class. It's not it's not everything that you want, but they hit they hit a lot of needs. They had a lot of early picks. They obviously had the two first rounders. They grabbed Darius Robinson with the 27th overall pick at defensive line. He is, you know, supposed to be he's he's not slotted in to be a starter, but he should get reps in a rotation uh with the other defensive ends, uh, BJ Ojolari, uh, Justin Jones, Roy Lopez, guys like that, Zavin Collins, and uh, Xavier Thompson. 
should be in those rotations. Uh, so I really, again, love the first round picks. Uh, an underrated pick, and I don't know how underrated it is, but Max Melton out of Rutgers at corner in round two, as well as Trey Benson, uh, or excuse me, as, as well as, uh, excuse me, I apologize, uh, Elijah Jones, uh, the, the two corners that they drafted in the second and the third round, uh, you know, these two should make instant impacts. Uh, right now, Max Melton is listed as a starter. Uh, on their depth chart, at least as far as it is on ESPN. He's a guy that I really liked coming out of college. His ability to play defense on the ball, uh, his interceptions, he had eight of them in his uh, in his career at Rutgers. He's a very good pick. I love that pick for them. They did a great job addressing all of their needs, and I I just, I really do love what the Cardinals have done this offseason. That's not to say it was perfect, right? This is, this is a team that had a lot of holes, so it's easy to say, hey, I love that they went and they fixed their needs. This was a team that had a lot of needs. Getting Kyler Murray back this season, they did, you, know, you saw how much of a difference it made at the end of the season, and it's kind of hard to, it's, it's hard to understate how much better this Cardinals team is uh, when they have a playmaker like Kyler Murray. And this is kind of kind of goes back to when we were talking about Tua in the first segment, right? Tua's not going to be that playmaker. He does other things that Kyler Murray can't do, uh, but, you know, Kyler Murray does a whole bunch of things that Tua can't do either. So, you know, the, you, you take what you get at the NFL level when you have these guys that should be starting, most definitely, these franchise-level quarterbacks, and none of them, or 90% of them, aren't going to be uh, perfect. So you just got to take take with the flaws there. But I really do like what the Cardinals did this offseason. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of all of their moves so far. You know, again, this is going to be a much improved Cardinals team, and they have a much harder schedule than they did last year, as, as has the entire NFC West. Again, as we've been going through it, they have to play the NFC North you know, the Lions, Packers, Bears, Vikings, as well as the AFC East, the Bills, Dolphins, Jets, and Patriots. Those are, f I mean, six of those eight teams, maybe seven, maybe five, any, at least five of those teams are scary to you, right? If you're looking at a, a team like the Cardinals that, you know, it's not necessarily the greatest team. It's got a lot of improvements, but it's not the greatest team out there. So while I do like what they've made, what they've done this offseason, I don't have a lot of criticisms for them. It doesn't mean it was perfect. I do like the 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 I I, I like the idea of what they're gonna do, right? They still have James Conner there, who is a really good back. You know, you forget how young he is. He's only 29 right now, so he hasn't hit that uh, you know, supposed running back cap at age 30. Get him behind that improved offensive line, and he's going to give you six yards a carry like he's been doing. You get Marvin Harrison on the outside, that's going to draw a lot of attention. Greg Dorch can move to the slot. Got Michael Wilson and Zay Jones as well. They kind of filled in those wide receivers. I like what this Cardinals team did. I really do like what they've done this offseason. I'm going to give them an A for their offseason. I love, love their draft. It's one of my favorite draft classes. It's not the best. But it's hard to be the best when you have the Bears who got uh, possibly a generational quarterback and possibly a generational wide receiver at the same or an all pro level wide receiver in both in the top 10. So it's that that's going to be a tough draft to beat right there. But I do really, really like the Arizona Cardinals draft and what they've done this offseason in the second year of the uh, regime over there. We're going to take a quick break, though. I'm going to give them an A for their offseason. And after this break, we're going to come back and do a record prediction game by game, talk about each one of them, and give them a uh, tell, tell you guys if you if I think the, uh, the Cardinals will make the playoffs, how many wins they'll get, give you a full season prediction. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 
Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. Uh, I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you're just tuning in, we're halfway through. We just took a little break here. We did a little off-season review for the Arizona Cardinals. A lot of it is in their draft. They made some solid pickups at in the free agency pool as well, uh, adding Jonah Williams and Sean Murphy Bunting on the back end to really improve that defense. We'll go through and give them a record prediction in this segment. But before we do, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw it in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate every single one of you guys for sticking around talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Friday afternoon. I hope you guys enjoy your weekend coming up. The Olympics are here, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, on Monday. Uh, But we are going to finish up our Arizona Cardinals coverage here going over the season preview. I gave them an A for their offseason. Again, it was just a really solid offseason. They filled a lot of their holes with starting level players. I really do like what they did uh, over the offseason and especially in the draft. That being said, this is a tough, tough schedule, uh, and it doesn't start easy either. They open up their schedule against the Bills on the road, the Rams at home, the Lions, the Commanders, the 49ers. That's the first five weeks, and you know there's a winnable game or two in there for them, but you're, t- you're going up against uh, both the Lions and the 49ers, the two teams that made it to the NFC Championship game last year, as well as the Bills, who are the Bills with Josh Allen and will be fully healthy week one. The Rams are a division opponent. Not easy. It is at home, but it's a division opponent. And the Commanders, again, it's it, I think the Commanders and the, and the Cardinals are very similarly built, actually. So that one should be a really good game. But it's not going to start off good. The Bills on the road week one, that's a loss, a tough place to play, uh, and just a tough team to run into it to begin your campaign. The Rams at home, I also have them losing. It's not, you know, it's not easy. I mean, even past the 49ers, right? To open up your season with Bills, Rams, Lions, Commanders, 49ers, Packers, Chargers, Dolphins, Bears, Jets, that's all pre-buy. That's one of the toughest schedules there. It is one of the toughest schedules there is, right? If you go back to playoff teams from last year, there's only there's there's only only four of your games are against non-playoff teams, and one of those is the Jets, and the Jets are you know don't really count because they're getting Aaron Rodgers back. So you know this is this is a really really tough opponent, a tough schedule at least especially in the beginning for the first ten weeks. But a loss to the Bills to open up the season, a loss to the Rams. Uh, as we head into week two. Uh, week three against the Lions does not get any easier. It is at home, but you know the Lions, they'll take care of business there. I have them winning in week three. This Commanders game, like I said, I think these two teams are built really similarly. Mobile quarterbacks. Cliff Kingsbury is now on the coaching staff for the uh, for the uh, excuse me, for the Washington Commanders, I think that might give them the edge. I'm going to give this win to the Commanders as they start 0-4. And And again, next game is up against the 49ers. That's 0-5 to start the season. And it's not really against for any fault of their own, right? That is a, that's about as tough as a five game stretch as you can get to open up your season. It doesn't really get any easier though. Then you get a game against the Packers, and I'm going to give them a win here. It's up in Lambeau. I can't imagine this team starting off 0-6. This is a better team than that. It's just a brutal, brutal schedule. Taking that momentum from a win, 1-5 through six weeks, they go and take on the Los Angeles Chargers. And as much as I love Justin Herbert, I'm a big Justin Herbert guy, uh, I don't think this team is ready yet. This it's this Cardinals team is better than this Chargers team. They're both in similar development stages, but I am taking the Cardinals here. And then you go on the road, take on the Miami Dolphins in Miami. Both of them play in hot places, but I'm giving the Dolphins this edge. They've just signed Tua earlier today. That's the 
him, uh, Tyreek Hill, it's going to be tough for the, uh, for the Cardinals defense to deal with that. So I'm giving the Dolphins a win here in week eight, week nine against Caleb Williams the, and the revamped Bears offense. I'm giving this one to the Cardinals. I do think this is another one that could go either way. I like this Bears team, but it is, it is a tough matchup for both of them. And then the Jets, Aaron Rodgers is going to do his thing. He's going to dissect the Cardinals here. So heading into their bye week, week 11, they are just three and seven. Not a good look. Again, it's just a brutal schedule. There's, there's not really much respite anywhere. You might get one game, but even, again, like I said, even the, even the four non-playoff teams that they're playing, you know, they're getting an Aaron Rodgers-led Jets team. They're getting the always dangerous Justin Herbert with the Chargers. Jordan Love, uh, excuse me, they're getting, you know, Jaden Daniels and the Commanders, as well as, you know, Caleb Williams and the Bears. Those are the four non-playoff teams, and those are not shabby non-playoff teams. So this is not, not, this is not an easy schedule at all. Uh, heading out of the bye. Weeks 12 to 18, it's easier. It's much easier from here. You have the Seahawks, the Vikings, the Seahawks again, Patriots, Panthers, Rams, and 49ers. And this is a much easier part of the schedule. This is where you want to live. If you can be even close to 500 after that brutal schedule that they play in the first half, the Cardinals could surprise some people. Now, do I think they're going to do that? Obviously not. I have them going three and seven in the first 10 weeks, and I don't see it continuing uh, much different uh, after the bye week against the Seahawks in Seattle. That is another loss. They rebound, though. In Minnesota, they get a win against the Vikings. Returning home to face the Seahawks yet again, I don't see that game going any differently. I have the Seahawks taking care of business twice. They'll beat the Patriots in week 15. And then the Panthers. This is a game that I gave to the Panthers because I thought the Panthers were a better team. Uh, I thought the Panthers deserved a win, right, when I was doing my schedule. This is a game that could go either way, which is why I'm always going to give you a plus-minus at the end of my record prediction, but I'm giving the Panthers a win here. They close it out against two division opponents, two division opponents that need to win these games to make the playoffs. I'm giving the Rams a win in uh in week 17 and maybe the 49ers rest some guys but maybe they're playing for that one seed and that's that's what i have them doing here right now playing for that one seed trying to uh get that one seed away from the lions uh a little sneak peek there for you but that's a loss i have the cardinals finishing their season at five and twelve Again, it's a tough schedule. I think this is a bit team that's better than 5-12. and 12. I'm going to give this team anywhere from 5-7 to seven wins, 5-8 to eight wins, you know? This is a team that could be as good, could, could be a 500 team. I'm not going to say they're going to be great and going to make the playoffs, but they could be anywhere from a top 5 pick to on the fringe of the playoffs, you know, the outside looking in, just barely missing out on it. And that... That is a good spot to be if you're the Cardinals. You just have to continue to build on your successes, continue to have good off seasons. Let me know what you think of the Arizona Cardinals. I have them going 5-12. and 12. We are going to finish off our show today in our next segment, going over our Friday MLB Power Rankings. So we have the brand new updated Power Rankings for you. It's been 21 days since I last did it. I went on vacation. The All-Star break happened. It has been some time. I'm excited to dive back into it with you guys. Come on back for that. We'll be right back after these messages here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. <laughs> 